<laughs> Man, am I excited today. I am going to whoop your butt in this conversation. So I hope you prepared because I've been sitting on this one for like two weeks. And we're so. recording. You, you actually just did the we're opening cool. of the show right there. So right. you're great job. Great introduction. Way to go. What are we talking about today, Big Phil? Um, oh, okay. <laughs> and we're talking about me. We don't have enough time to me. do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna... Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, okay. Hey, enough about you. Let's stop. Whatever. Hey, we're going to talk about the quarterbacks from the AFC North and the NFC. Oh, wait, let me just see what we got. And the NFC That's right. North, well, both, our fir- both North conferences. <laughs> That's right. So we're going to do that. show we're, we're doing is just the AFC North. And then we'll get to the rest of the divisions there after that. So you don't even you don't even have to tease right. the other ones there. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, you should inform me this. Since I you're did. The, you didn't listen. Um, you know, just like all the other meetings that we thing, have, you so. don't listen, and it's okay. So I'll just keep. Just like you growing up. That's right. Okay. Just like yeah. you growing up, you didn't listen to me. That's okay, how it works. Yeah. I didn't you, listen to my father, and now you don't listen to your yes, son. It's okay. all good. No. <laughs> Well, I can understand why you don't listen to your, well, <laughs> well, yeah, enough, to your brother. Enough, enough said there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's enough said. Yeah, that's right. All right, what do we got? Let's go. AFC North quarterbacks. We're going to rank them, and I'm going to yeah, go be the host just for a second here. You, you get to go first, which I don't like. I love to go first, but you go ahead. Who do you have? Yeah, what are we gonna do? We gonna go from one. four I mean, to one, if we or start one to with four? number one? Come on, that's not exciting. Let's 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 let this oh, build okay. up. Let's let it marinate a little bit. But at number four, AFC North quarterback rankings. Oh. Whoever the hell yes. the starting quarterback is for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and uh, I put that little question mark there, right there, because we we really don't know Ooh. how this situation will play out. You know, there will still be a lot. I think that has to be determined from now until the beginning of the season. Uh, I, I know that Justin Fields, Russell Wilson, Arthur Smith, you know, they all are guys that got chips on their shoulder. Mike Tomlin, we know that he constantly lives with that chip on his shoulder. You know, it just comes with the job of being the Pittsburgh Steelers head coach. But that being said, these guys still, I feel like, have a lot to work out from now until the season as far as who's the starter, how the offense looks, how they build around who is eventually named the starter. And with Justin Fields and his, you know, obviously departure from Chicago, right? What do we see consistently there? Just, I think, a lack of ability for him to drop back and throw the ball consistently, accurately, you know, from the beginning to the end of the game. He has improved dramatically, I think, in improving his motion. Even seeing clips of him this offseason, it looks like he's tightened up his motion again. With Russell Wilson, you know, can he just kind of put it together and be – you know, the Russell Wilson that he once was for the Seattle Seahawks, and that is managed the game extremely well, throwing the football accurately, making good decisions, and then occasionally allowing his athleticism to push the football, you know, down the field at times because he still throws one of the better deep balls in the NFL. Um, And and that's really what the Steelers have to rely on. So they got a lot to solve here so far. And number four for me, the Steelers quarterback room. (laughs) Wow, really good stuff there. I mean, you you hit all the points, that's for sure, about both quarterbacks, Arthur Smith, the new coordinator, Mike Tomlin, the head coach. But I would just say this about everything you said. You're wrong. I mean, that's wrong. And number four that is, is going to be crazy. the crazy. Sean Watson no of way. the Cleveland Browns. No, it's not. Why is it? Wait, hold, on, hold on. Why Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, we saw them last year. They had some moments where they really played well. Now the scenarios really change. You just explained all the reasons, you know, right. a lot of reasons. Oh, they got all these things going for them up there. And I'll talk about that in a second. Deshaun Watson, did you watch him no. play? Did you think he was sharp? Name me the game. He went, wow, Deshaun Watson. That's the guy I saw. Oh, so you're back in <laughs> no, what I, I just said. No, I don't want to change it. I, st- I don't. I there? still would pick um, Deshaun Watson is? going into the season as my quarterback over the other two for sure. Yeah, I, you yeah. know, listen, I'm talking, it's a little bit more than that to me, you know, where the situation, who you are, talent, and what's right. the coaching and everything else like that. But hey, they lost Alex Van Pelt in Cleveland. Not that he, I know Kevin Stefanski is the big play caller there, play designer, and he did a great job last year. But I got to see Deshaun Watson 
stay in the game, you know, and play more than one game that's good and the other ones that, come on, we talked about this last year. What was he doing when he was healthy? Right. He was playing out of control. And we talked about it early. I mean, it was really unbelievable. It was like he was out there and he was mad at the world. He was going to try to beat everybody up on the defensive side, which when you try <laughs> to do that as a quarterback, you lose. That's, you know, you just can't win that kind of battle. You, you know, and he's all the money, the investment. It's time to play, protect yourself, you know, manage the game better. It's not all about we got to make it happen right this second. And I thought his downfield throwing overall, I, I just right. didn't think it was – it was not sharp, and they had people wide open for touchdowns, especially early in the year. I understand, but that he hadn't played a lot of football up to that. But even then, when you're throwing the ball down the field, you don't even have to be that accurate. Just get it somewhere in the area, and he didn't do that. And you know, so that's why yeah, I so have you and Deshaun I. We Watson have that three four, four switch. So there you go, right? So I, and and I agree with a lot of things that you're saying, and I guess right. That's where for me, as if I were to go into this season, I, I probably would still have or prefer to have Deshaun Watson as my quarterback over the other two right now. And, and you make a lot of good points because I think Russell had a better year than a lot of people yeah. like to give him credit for. And obviously how it ended there with Sean Payton is a little unfair to him and what he was able to do in that that transitional year from from the head coaching situation. But you know, all that being said, I, I don't know why I still just, I guess really the saving grace for me with Deshaun Watson is, is that I have a little bit more faith in the Kevin Stefanski situation, the the skill group that surrounds him, right? With Amari Cooper, Ninjoku, the running game, how the team is built, even defensive coordinator wise with Schwartz, you know, that's where I feel like, you know, I know we're judging the quarterbacks here, but I do think that Deshaun Watson is in a better environment right now, you know, than the other two in Pittsburgh. Well, you know, again, nice. I, I understand. But, you know, I'm going with Pittsburgh for many reasons to right. be the third one instead of the fourth. And I, I, Russell Wilson, you know, he got slapped around again. You know, his reputation and all that, that's yeah. got to be, you know, listen, that's a big motivation. You know, when they count you out, oh, he doesn't know how to get along with people and this. And you you said it. He still has talent. He's got a still a good, strong arm, can throw it down the field. And I think the big thing he did in Denver, yeah, he didn't turn it over, but he played so careful that it was – it. the fact yeah. that he didn't turn it over didn't do me any good because he was just – and I understand it too. He was put in that situation. He felt the pressure. He was doing everything right. just not to turn the ball over. And I saw him pull the ball down and run when he didn't have to many times because he wasn't completely sure about what he was seeing. And he's in the pocket. It gets tight. His first instinct is to run. And he, I thought he just passed up some plays. And, you know, I think about that. But the other thing is Justin he Fields. He did. He got better as the year went along last year. And his running – and, you know, I heard your brother say this, and he said something I actually agreed with that – that was kind of supposed to be funny, Matt – um, that, you know, Justin Fields is right. the best running quarterback in the NFL. And that's seeing a lot in Lamar Jackson. But Justin right. Fields is a big, I mean, hell, he can be a running back. He can be a linebacker. And he's got a strong arm. The throwing, it's, um, you know, I saw him in the, the little OTAs or whatever. Man, he's got a compact motion, Matt. And I, it, it's actually so tight. I wish he'd loosen it up yeah. a little. But uh, so that's my number three. I'm going to take Russell Wilson and see how that works out with Arthur Smith. It is really the yeah, perfect I, marriage, Arthur Smith being there. I think th this is going to be fun to watch, Pittsburgh. Offensive line is going to be better. The play calling, play designs are going to be better. Yeah, absolutely. And the quarterbacks I, are going I to like be better. all that stuff. And I, I think, too, Justin Fields, I so agree you with go. you. His motion, it definitely looks more compact. It looks like he's really focused on – you know, that aspect of his game to be more accurate because of his long looping motion caused a lot of his in inaccuracies, you know, early on in his career. So love all that sentiment. All right. So now, right. I went first the other round. All right. Now you go first. All right. Who's your number two quarterback in the AFC North? Oh man, this, this yeah. is tough. I mean, you know, you look at this, this is a pretty good lineup of quarterbacks in the NFC North, but my number two is Joe Burrow. And wow. it wasn't number one. He's number two in this division right now. And, you know, many reasons. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know it's hard to do that. It, it was. 
because when he was healthy, when he was healthy, I thought he was physically, once he got healthy, he was throwing the football better than I've seen him throw it in his career. And his movement, it just gets better and better. And his throwing on the run, you know, I, I don't know why. I was watching Joe Burrow's highlight reel a couple of days ago of his 50 throws, and I'm just watching him, dang, you just forget the second level play or whatever. He's in the pocket, gets rid of the football quick. I love their scheme. It's not really complicated but it's easy for the quarterback to see and make the decision. I don't know if you agree with that, but it's not a lot of formations and movement because we got talent. Whoops, I just knocked my water over. We got talent, so let's sit it there and let Joe make the right decision, which we know he will, and that decision is going to come down a lot of times to our receiver being one-on-one or being in an area against the defensive back and that receiving core. Very good. Might not be as good this year. We'll see. Can they keep Jamar Chase and T. Higgins in there? I think they will. Pretty amazing. So Joe Burrow's my number two. And by your facial expressions, I can see no, you don't actually, agree, I do with, agree me. with you. Number two, I have Joe Burrow as well. Yep. Number two is Joe oh. Burrow. And, you know, for the a lot of the, yeah. the same reasons that I think we're both thinking about here, right? And Joe Burrow is phenomenal. And that's what's really wild to me is to think that Joe Burrow is the second best quarterback in his own division when we think that Joe Burrow is one of the you know, easy top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL, right? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. It would be disrespect to say one of the top 10. I know, but it, it's, it's definitely like a debate, yeah, though, so. too, you know, because we <laughs> there's a lot going on here. I think that's like it. It's a little bit like the receiver position, I feel like, now in the NFL, too. Yeah. You know, it's you can kind of have it for one year and then lose it the next, you know. So it's like you got to always kind of reclaim, you know, that title you know, in the quarterback world right now. And right now, I just feel like Joe Burrow, we know how great he is. I totally agree with all the extended plays. What they do for the quarterback there in Cincinnati is phenomenal. At times, I actually think there's too much pressure on Joe Burrow to perform at a high level, you know, consistently the way that they do. We discussed this multiple times in our show and other episodes, how we would like, you know, Cincinnati to alleviate some pressure on him by being a little bit more well-rounded on the offensive side of the football, yeah. developing a more patient run game and all those things because of how good Joe is, you know, behind the line of scrimmage with making people miss and making great decisions. You know, the injury stuff, I'm not going to even add that into why he is number two, right? More so just the fact that I really think the guy number at, at number one, you know, it's just hard to deny kind of what he has done when he has stayed healthy as well, Right. And, and that's where I, I don't want the injuries to either to right. play a factor in, in either one of our, you know, decisions here with one and two in the AFC North. But Joe's awesome. Zach Taylor, help him out a little bit more consistently in the run game and stuff like that with the way that they run this team. And then the skill group speaks for itself. He's got a lot of skill guys around him. They do a great job of facilitating. But you're right, the stagnation of their offense, I think, leads to the fact that people can kind of tee off on those obvious passing situations against Joe Burrow and these guys and make it a little bit more difficult for him at times to, to kind of stay healthy and stay upright. And uh, that'll be the big question mark really, I think for, for them this year, it's just, can they kind of keep building on what they've done? I really do like the kid that they drafted from Alabama, Jermaine Burton. I think he's a very good football player. So add him into the lineup in that skill group. That's already pretty damn good. And uh, you know, the, the Bengals are, are in a great situation right now offensively. Yeah, you know, you bring up one point. You know, we just talked about that. Listen, and, and I haven't heard it much this offseason, which, thank God, there's just not enough quarterbacks to go around. Oh, okay. I mean, we're always going to judge them, but we, whatever. But there are yeah. a lot of right. really good quarterbacks right now in the NFL. And we got a yeah. lot of good backups in the NFL right now, too. And what hurts the backups, it, a lot of it's not talent, Matt, right? It's just the fact, don't get a lot of practice time and – you get thrown in there out of nowhere. Come on, be better than the starter or be as be as good as they are. That's hard to do. But I'm going to just say this real quick. The Bengals, what they showed a yeah. lot of people, Jake Browning, man, I, I would say most of his stint as the starter for the Bengals, surprisingly yeah. not good, but really good. And, you know, it was really interesting, and I'm, I'm trying to make these quick, that he just said he learned so much from Joe Burrow. 
just relax, just, you know, don't get all hyper and just be calm and play that way. And I believe it. You know, that first game he played down in Jacksonville, damn, he was like, <laughs> somebody give him a Coca-Cola, get him some energy. But he was just, but you very just was always like looking down and just playing the play. It was, it was really cool. And I know he probably did learn that from Joe Burrow, who shows almost no emotion when he plays the, the position during games. So we we agreed there. Really shocked. So give me your Lamar Jackson. I know you got him at number one. And yeah, so I do think I. really for him right him now, it's just one? that, uh, of course, the year that he just had, obviously staying healthy. He's the former MVP now going into this year again, two times over. Uh, you know, like like Joe, you know, his leadership, his attitude, how that just, you know, goes through the entire program, right, from just top down, from the fans to the management, to the team, you know, it, it's just intoxicating, you know, and you can see that they have that power on their teams when you see them play, you know, and Lamar and them, you know, I, I just know for a fact that they, they were a Super Bowl caliber team. We discussed that multiple times, you and I, and I think Lamar is, is kind of reaching that next peak as far as his game and where he at, a, a, as a player, as a leader, right? As a quarterback in the NFL, we've seen Lamar adapt to the NFL game more than any other quarterback, you know, that we've seen really in, in a long time. And that was, you know, from the great Roman era of being a little bit more primarily a running athletic quarterback to now we see him being a great pack, a pocket passer and decision maker and distributor of the football as a passer and then scrambling as a result of, you know, just trying to make plays. And I think Lamar right now just, is really kind of in the peak of his career as a well-rounded quarterback. And that's why I have him at number one. Okay. Well, why, what's he got to work on? Let's, let me ask you that question. So you're talking all this nice stuff about Lamar. What's I the biggest thing him, he has well, to work on as a quarterback? We've discussed this a few different times, right? The fact that, you know, we want to see more anticipation throws. We want to see yeah. him, you know, start to throw the football or layer the football versus zone coverages, throw people open more often, right? And we don't see that a ton because he has a strong rocket right arm and he can just kind of wait and just zip it in there. So that's something that, you know, Todd and him, if they're they're evaluating themselves yeah. after last year is can they have a few more of those plays, kind of like how Tua and McDaniel have with their – Dolphins offense where it's all rhythm based. Can they add that stuff to their their repertoire there in Baltimore to go along with the power passing that he he distributes? Yeah. Well, you know, look, that's that's going to be the hard part because he, you know he doesn't anticipate right. as much as you'd like to see a quarterback in the league do because you said it right. One, he has a strong arm, so strong arm guys by and large are not going to be great anticipators because they don't have to be. But he needs to do that to a higher degree than he does. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But the fact that he can run is another reason why he does. He says, well, if I don't, I'm going to wait and see. If I don't really like it, then I'm going to try to run. And, you know, the other thing I really like what he did, I forgot what he, yes. his weight was. Did he say he's down yeah. to 205? He's kind of he going back up. to the his rookie year. And, you know, it, all this, well, you know, there's other quarterbacks in the league that went away 205. And they go, you got to put on weight, you know. No, that's who Lamar is. Lamar is supposed to be thin and look like, it, you know, as I right. say, he's nothing but bone, ligaments, and skin. That's what he's got going on. And so it's going to be interesting to see what that does for him. But to do what Drew and I are talking about, the anticipation, that has to be from the first day of OTAs and just do it so much right. that it actually can become a bigger part of him. And the last thing real quick is deciding how to throw the ball. And it, it it really, we saw it in the championship game. The play called, the, you look at the guy running down the field, it called for right. a high, soft throw, and he would throw a rocket. And then when he needed the rocket, he would throw it high and soft. And that those are, I think those are big things to learn and to get better at. But we got Lamar at number one. Yeah. Now he's got a few line changes coming in front of him this year. But um, we, we know he's going to be good. I mean, damn. And uh, I can't wait to see if he even looks faster, Matt, than he has been in the last year or two because he, you know, slimmed up a yeah. little and really and, and, became and the I guy think for him to too, outside so, of just our quarterback go. rankings one through four, you know, when we look at the the overall picture for each of these quarterbacks, Lamar isn't, I think, the best surrounding cast 
from coaching to the players that that are around him too. You know, I mean, we we have a solid receiver core. We saw the emergence of Zay Flowers and how talented he is. We got a healthy Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, who really impressed right. when Mark Andrews was out last year. The addition of Derrick Henry now into that offense, you know, being physical and strong, that's huge. And, yeah, and really, I think Todd Munkin's experience from a year ago, now building on that, right, and, and understanding – all right, there's regular season football, then there's playoff football, and just kind of adding more to that Rolodex uh, of how to balance, you know, what my quarterback's going through, what our team is going through, and how to win those games. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes when you're in those games like they were in a championship yeah. game, hey, it's going to be ugly. And, that's just, and, and you just play accordingly to it. Don't try to think that we're going to go out there and razzle dazzle and just blow them up because we got talent. You know, you got to be willing to go yeah. down there and fight and play a low scoring game and win those ugly games. Which, hey, a great learning experience for them. Baltimore still one of the best teams on paper and in talent in the NFL. So it's going to be fun to see. So that was pretty cool. Uh, you want to give us last thing. Give me your best backup in the best backup kind of, uh, AFC. I, I probably would, would have to go uh, with Browning in, in Cincinnati. It's kind yeah. of hard to go away from him because of what he has yep. shown. And, and I guess second best would be whoever is the number two for the Steelers this year, uh, because I feel like both guys will be experienced and also have that big play potential too. So Browning and whoever uh, you know filters out in that two spot with the Steelers QB situation. You know, and Jameis Winston is a backup. That's a good point, too. He's going to fit in great at Cleveland. So that's enough. Hey, this, this division, <laughs> yeah, you're right, it's one and two, it looks pretty damn good. So, hey, good stuff. It does look good. That good was stuff. Fun. Um, hey, so you did fun, it right man. yourself, too. You did, you did okay today. Yeah, I'm going Hey, appreciate it. Phil. I'm actually going to pay you, you a little Thank money you. for today. <laughs> well, maybe. All right, we'll be back. Yeah, you <laughs> we'll be right, back for a, a little good a things, good thing. Poly reference there. Uh, we'll be back with a little bit more QB uh, rankings right. with divisions here coming up soon. Uh, that's all for my co-host there, Phil Sims, and I'm Matt Sims. We'll be back. Sims complete more with more QB breakdowns oh, okay. coming up soon. Thank you so much to Believe and everyone else too as well. Sign up uh, on our YouTube page, like and subscribe to Sims Complete. Also check out our videos on Believe uh, YouTube page as well. Like and subscribe. Write in some comments too as well. Me and Big Phil will do our best to answer those uh, in the near future. So yeah, I know, I know. We Ooh, we got we got I torn apart a little bit with our with our NFC South rankings, man. So we'll 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 have some more fun with that here pretty soon with some Q and As. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get a few of those guys that didn't agree with it and tell them to come on and we'll bust them yeah, up. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know if we want to put them on the show, but we'll we'll answer some questions. We'll do that. At all least. right, that'd be great. That, that's fun. That'd be good. All right, all right. Good stuff. That's all for us. The Sims complete. We'll be back with more QB breakdowns and rankings here soon. See ya.